Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. In today's video, my top five editing tools in On One Photo Raw for your landscape photos. These are the adjustments I reach for again and again with my imagery. We'll run through them here, craft a photo along the way. And really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're thinking about adding On One Photo Raw to your toolkit, check the show notes, links down there. We got an offer code, save you a little bit of money. No extra cost to you, gives me a little bit of support so I can make more videos. Videos. So let's get into it. Number one is dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast is a great filter for any of your landscape photos. Just adds a really wonderful but natural looking pop to detail before and after. And in this particular photo, I'll use the masking tools because we have masking tools on all of our filters to remove this partially maybe about 50% or so from the top part of the photo so I can keep the sky a little softer and have that detail added to the foreground. So number one, dynamic contrast before and after. Number two is some sort of color adjustment. Now there is a bunch of different color filters in Photo Raw. I use color adjustment. That's the one that's got all the controls that I like. It's got the styles. And generally I will go with either desert or sky. Now sky here will be a little bit weak because there's mostly yellows and oranges here. I think desert will be a little nicer because of that warmer sky. I'll check fall. Desert is going to be the winner. And that's it. That one is done and ready to go. And number three is some kind of glow. I like just a little bit of a soft diffusion to a photo. It's a really nice touch for landscapes. Uh, I tend to gravitate toward the glow filter. There is sunshine as well, but I like the glow filter because it has lots of different options. So I'll add glow. And one in particular style that I'm particularly fond of is this radiance glow here. Now here's the thing. This is really strong right now. Add that radiance glow. That's really, really strong. We don't want it that strong. Dark things don't glow. Right? They just don't. Glow is light glowing. It's not darkness glowing. So the very first thing I do with these filters, any type of glow look, open that up, hit the luminosity button. That automatically reduces the glow on darker tones and leaves it on lighter tones. And for this photo, I may want to introduce some of that glow back into the shadows. So I'll reduce the density of the mask by um, some, not a lot, maybe about there. So now before that glow and after that glow, just gives it a little more ambiance, a little more feel. But the key thing with that glow filter is don't apply it too harsh to your shadows because shadows don't glow, bright things glow. Luminosity mask, one click, and you're good on that. Number four is the local adjustments. I know this is not a single kind of filter, but the locals are really important for shaping and crafting your landscape. First off, you can imagine I want to darken that sky a little bit. Well, the default is to darken here. I'll grab my masking bug. Drop that on the scene, rotate it around, feather that out, and then fine tune the amount of decrease. Maybe a half a stop. That looks pretty good. I'll add one more adjustment. In this case, I'll use the detail style there so it's popping up the structure. I'm going to use that same luminosity mask trick. I want to add a little more detail to my rocks, my darker items. Well, those are the darker shadowy things. In this case, pop in here, luminosity, does the exact opposite of what I want, invert. Now I have that detail pop right on the rocks and it's not really going and affecting the sky. You can see this mask, see that swatch there, that mask is really just impacting the lower part of the scene. And I have controls here. I really need to fine tune it. But generally, those two clicks get me what I need. And the final one, number five, is the vignette. Back in effects, I'll add the vignette. Now the way I like to work with vignettes is I'll take the brightness down some so I can see it, take the feather all the way down so I can see a nice edge, and then shape it. You know, shape the vignette how we want it to be. This one, I just want to touch the corners, so I'll push this really large, feather it back out, and then adjust the brightness so that 
the vignette is there, but not really perceivable. And for this photo, I'm going to turn to the blending options one more time because my lower part of my scene, it's got those darker corners there. I want to protect my shadows. So I'll go into this protection slider here and I push shadows up saying don't over darken the shadows. So the vignette is being lightened up just on this lower corner here by virtue of that protection slider in the vignette. And that is it. Those are the five. So dynamic contrast, color adjustment, glow, locals, and then finally a vignette. Let's take a look at before and after. So this is before those changes. And this is after. And those are if you don't know where to begin with your landscape photos, grab those five tools, work with them, and you'll really be able to shape and craft a wonderful landscape without spending too much time scrounging around and trying out all the different filters. Start with those, then grow your skill set. Hope you found this useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.